Hello and welcome to another Corefix video from Corefix, where I do what I love and I love what I do. In today's video I'm going to be uh, testing and repairing code P0161. This code is speci uh, specifically for uh, Bank 2 sensor 2 oxygen sensor heater performance. Now uh, let's talk a little bit about the oxygen sensor itself. In order for it to work correctly and efficiently it has to be really hot, especially on a cold engine. That's why it's equipped with an internal heater. Uh, the vehicle I'm working on is a 2005, let me see, 2005 Chevy Suburban with a 5.3 liter V8 engine. In order for this code to set, uh, the PCEM or the power control module uh, monitors the amount of uh, amperage reading uh, that the, uh, the, the, the oxygen sensor heater draws from the, electrical, uh, from the, uh, from the vehicle electrical system. Uh, based on that uh, amperage reading, uh, the PCEM can actually calculate uh, the amount of resistance inside the heater. So what I need to do, I need to look up uh, the amperage reading for all the oxygen sensor heaters. Uh, since this vehicle is equipped with four, uh, two upstream and two downstream. And now, as you can see over here, uh, the, uh, the engine is run at uh, 632 RPM. Uh, the engine coolant temperature or the engine temperature is 126. Now, the top three are bank one sensor one, bank one sensor two, and uh, bank two sensor one. The one on the center row right here on the left, that's bank two sensor two. Uh, and it reads zero, so I have no amperage reading whatsoever. Now I know the PCM is actually activating the uh, the heater, but uh, there is no amperage reading. Now the issue could be inside or outside the oxygen sensor. Inside, as uh, you know, the heater circuit inside the oxygen sensor is open, or outside as uh, the, you know open fuse or uh, bad wiring or uh, bad PCM. So the next step will be physically to check uh, the power feed from the fuse box and the, the low side or the ground side feed from the, uh, from the PCM. Bank 2 sensor 2 oxygen sensor is located on the right side of the engine. But before I do any, uh, before I do any testing, I need to check the condition of the, uh, you know, the wiring harness on uh, both sides, the engine harness side and the, uh, the sensor side. Uh, but it uh, uh, looks like uh, you know all the wires are okay, and also I'm gonna, I need to check the um, uh, the condition of the uh, the connector itself, the pins inside the uh, the connector, the male and the female connector. Uh, make sure everything is okay, has no corrosion inside or anything like that. And uh, I mean, it looks it looks pretty clean. So I'm just gonna go ahead and proceed with my testing. I'm gonna test the oxygen sensor heater circuit twice, one with the sensor unplugged and one uh, with the sensor plugged in. First I'm gonna start with the sensor unplugged and I'm gonna test the, the power from the fuse box all the way down to the oxygen sensor on the uh, engine harness side. I should see 12 volts going to it, which that's what I have on my tester. Uh, it says 12.3 right there. So uh, the circuit, uh, the power circuit all the way from the fuse down to the, uh, the oxygen sensor is okay at this point. The next test, test will be to test the, uh, the low side or the ground side or the driver side from the PCM. Uh, now uh, by back, back propping the, uh, the ground side from the PCM I should see a, um, a green light uh, coming from the PCM. Now the, the green light that means it's, uh, the PCM is actually grounding the, uh, uh, the heater. So that's what I have so far. So uh, both circuits uh, from the fuse box and the PCM uh, are okay. Uh, uh, all the way down to the oxygen sensor. Next, I'm going to repeat the same test, but this time with the oxygen sensor connector uh, plugged in. Now, <coughs> I'm going to leave my tester hooked up to the low side of the oxygen sensor. Now, the, the result of this test uh, can tell me a lot about the condition of the heater element inside the oxygen sensor. Now, if I end up with the same result as the first test, uh, that means uh, the oxygen sensor uh, uh, is bad and it has to be replaced. Uh, now, uh, the result of this test actually is the same as the first one because I still have 12 volts on one side and ground on the other side. This tells me that the oxygen sensor heater element inside the oxygen sensor is open and it has to be the oxygen sensor has to be replaced. Replacing the oxygen sensor could be an easy job or it could be a major pain. Uh, you see, the oxygen sensor is actually uh, screwed into the exhaust pipe. 
Now, uh, due to the weather condition and uh, rust, uh, the oxygen sensor might be stuck um, uh, stuck on the uh, uh, the exhaust pipe. Now, if you try to break it loose to remove it, uh, you might actually damage the threads uh, in the pipe exhaust pipe itself. Now, if the threads are damaged, uh, it's either you have to fix them with a tap or uh, the exhaust pipe has to be replaced. And that's a big job and a very costly job. Now the tool I'm going to use to remove the oxygen sensor, depending on how much room I have, uh, I usually try to avoid uh, using an oxygen sensor uh, socket. Uh, the tool I'm going to use is a, a 22 or 7 8 open end wrench. Because I want uh, most of the force or most of the torque I'm applying to the oxygen sensor to remove it to be at the base of the oxygen sensor. The sensor is not supposed to be super tight, so I'm just going to go ahead and give it a quick test. Uh, I'm not applying too much force to it, just to see, just to, to get a feel uh, of the oxygen sensor to see if it's actually uh, stuck on the pipe or not. And uh, it feels like uh, it is stuck on the pipe. So uh, the solution for this is basically heating and shrinking. So what I'm going to have to do, I'm going to have to heat up the oxygen sensor and the exhaust pipe, then uh, cool it down with cold water. Now to heat the exhaust pipe and the sensor, I'm, I'm going to need a uh, heat source. Uh, now uh, you can use, uh, I can use uh, an, uh, an open flame uh, heat source like oxyacetylene or propane torch, but I always try to avoid using them because uh, they're a fire hazard. Now the tool I'm going to use uh, is an induction heater or an electric heater. Uh, this this tool actually uses um, electromagnetic field to heat uh, metal objects, and uh, it works really good and uh, it, it gets the job done. Next, I'm going to show you this tool in action. Uh, but one thing I notice about this tool, I mean, if whatever you're heating uh, has a surface rust on it, it will take longer to actually heat the uh, the object. So uh, uh, when you use this tool, you got to make sure the, uh, ha the you know whatever you're heating has no surface rust on it. Uh, as you can see over here, I mean, the light is off and the oxygen sensor is actually glowing red. That means it's really hot. Uh, uh, you know, uh, no open flames, no fire hazard. I mean, this tool works pretty good. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to remove my uh, heater and uh, you know cool the uh, oxygen sensor and the uh, the exhaust pipe with cold water uh, the process of heating and shrinking uh, known as heat treating but heat treating is different because uh, you know uh, you have different specification for heating and, sh and shrinking uh, but uh, in, uh, in this case uh, you know heating and shrinking basically uh, is supposed to make uh, the metal stronger but since rust is actually decaying metal it will expand the rust and then when you shrink it it will shrink so rapidly uh, it basically will crack so when it crack it becomes weaker and uh, the the oxygen sensor will become unstuck after the heating and cooling of the exhaust pipe on the sensor, uh, I'm going to try one more time to break it loose uh, to see if the, uh, the, pro the, the heating and cooling process actually did anything for me. Uh, and it looks like it did because uh, the sensor actually became unstuck and uh, I can actually unscrew it, uh, you know, by hand. So the threads uh, in the exhaust pipe, the exhaust pipe itself uh, is okay. So the only thing I need to do is just unscrew the old one and screw the, uh, the new oxygen sensor back, uh, back in the exhaust pipe. Before installing the new oxygen sensor, I'm going to have to match the, uh, the old part with the new one. And also I'm going to uh, show you why the, the oxygen sensor is actually bad or the heater element is bad inside the oxygen sensor. Uh, the difference between uh, a good and bad oxygen sensor heater element basically is the amount of resistance inside the, uh, the, the, the heater itself. So uh, if I measure the resistance on the old oxygen sensor, uh, uh, as you see the result is actually nothing so uh, that tells me the circuit is open inside uh, now uh, based on uh, you know uh, the specification for the heater resistance uh, you know you have a tolerance between let's say uh, you know 7 ohms to almost 18 ohms but uh, the, the meter is actually uh, reading uh, nothing so basically the, the circuit is open inside the heater uh, this is not the same case with the new one the new one when I measure the resistance inside the new oxygen sensor heater uh, the reading is actually 7.2 to 7.8 uh, that means uh, you know the, uh, the, reading, the resistance reading inside the uh, new oxygen sensor heater element is actually within specification and that's the difference between uh, a good and a bad oxygen sensor heater element the new oxygen sensor should come with a small tube of high temperature and ICs. Now this stuff should only be applied to the threads of the oxygen sensor. Uh, if I got the stuff on the tip of the oxygen sensor, it will contaminate the sensor and it will not function correctly. And also if I drop the sensor for any reason, uh, it will get damage on impact and I will have to get another one. Installing the new oxygen sensor into the exhaust pipe is a very simple and easy job. 
uh, it's very important to pay attention to the wires of the sensor because uh, they're supposed to twist with the sensor as I'm installed into the exhaust pipe now uh, I've seen a lot of people who install the, the oxygen sensor not paying attention to the wires and uh, the wires are twisted so bad that the sensor has to be replaced one more time like I mentioned before the oxygen sensor is not supposed to be super tight on the exhaust pipe uh, just tight enough not to cause an exhaust leak uh, I would say about uh, 25 to 35 foot pan of torque final step of installing the oxygen sensor is uh, to plug in the oxygen sensor into the main engine harness. Now uh, this connector has a lock on it. Now uh, if the lock does not fit that means the connector is not plugged in all the way. So I have to make sure that the connector is uh, all the way plugged in and uh, the, uh, the lock is, uh, is installed. Finally I need to go back to the data stream and uh, check the amperage reading on the new oxygen sensor heater element. In comparison to the old reading, uh, the old reading was 0, uh, the new reading is uh, 1.2, that means uh, the heater is working correctly and uh, it's a confirmed fix. At the end of this video, thanks for watching, please like, share and subscribe and if you have any questions, any suggestions, uh, please let me know in the comment section and thanks for watching.